Good morning once again, everybody. It is so good to see everybody. We often edit the other part out later on when we put it on our archives. And so we never know who's going to be watching next week or next year. Who, know, who knows when? So I just want to introduce myself once again. My name is Eric Bucci. I'm the lead pastor. If you're watching for the very first time or if you're here for the very first time, it's so good to see so many of you and all of you actually for that matter. And it's so good to see your smiles. Can we do me a big, can you guys do me a big favor? Can you just welcome everyone that's new here or, and not been here in a long time and everyone that's watching online, let them know how much God loves them. Go ahead. Nice and loud. <laughs> all right. Well, I just, we're going through a book of the Bible called First Peter. We're going line by line, verse by verse. And I, I tell you, I'm really enjoying this because it brings up topics I may not necessarily bring up. And we didn't think it's a good thing to get into the Word of God. It's a good thing to open the Bible. We encourage you to get yourself a copy of the Bible and read First Peter. I don't know when we're going to finish. I, I wasn't going to do today, but uh, I was going to go to the next verse, but I didn't think we had enough of it. Pastor Rich did a great job last week. I um, was talking about we have to be willing to suffer for Christ. But today we're going to be talking about something that maybe a lot of you don't like to do, and that's sharing what you believe. And, uh, and how important it is. And you're thinking, oh, I don't want to share what I... Well, let me just tell you a quick story. I, I heard this, and sometimes this happens. I heard these two pastors. There was a Baptist pastor and a Catholic priest there on both sides of the road. And they were sent, had these signs they were sending. The Baptist pastor says, you should stop before it's too late. He had a big sign while motorists were driving by. Down the street a little further, the Catholic priest says, turn around before it's too late. And so they were doing that, and all of a sudden a car went by, got you religious crazy nuts, and next thing you know, you hear a big splash. And the guy drove off the bridge. So the Baptist pastor went to the priest and said, maybe we should have said bridge is out. Okay. Well, you know, many times, everybody, sometimes we, we try to share what's true about God. And often we share in a way that's not understandable or we do in a way that's not clear. And the truth of the matter is the earth, the world, is driving down a road to destruction. And we have an opportunity and a responsibility to share that good news. In fact, I was even reading an article, what happened, I read it in the Chicago Tribune, about a, a doctor... Back in 2014, um, what happened was a man had a bladder cancer, and uh, he had an operation and all that, and the doctor took the much, most of it out, but he never got back to the patient, and the patient thought he was fine. The doctor said that's, he never got back to him. So a year went by, and he never followed up with him, and the man, he, doctor basically said, you're fine. And what happened was a year later, he went to another doctor at stage 4 cancer, and he died. This is a tr true story. And so there was a, there was a uh, lawsuit against this doctor for not telling the man or his caretaker the deadly disease that he had. In fact, this is what the article said. The patient should have been informed about the seriousness of his disease and been set up for his follow-up appointment. Chances are he would be alive today. You know, so many of us don't recognize the fact that all of us, all humanity is on a collision course of a fatal disease called sin. And sin simply means missing the mark. But the truth of the matter is, hell is where everyone is going who doesn't believe and follow Jesus. Now, it may not be politically correct, but it's the truth. And it would be hateful for me not to say the truth. In fact, in the Old Testament, they used to have these watchmen on the wall. And their job was to do the night watch or day watch, and they would watch as far as they could to make sure if an enemy was going to come against the city, they would have to alarm the town. The enemy is coming to be prepared. If the watchman did not share the information, the blood would be on his or her hands. And my friends, I know that doesn't really sound something you want to necessarily hear, but the truth of the matter is that there is an earth, and we are, we are on a collision course to a place called hell, eternal separation from God. And sometime we're going to get in, into a series of heaven and hell and what it really means. But let me just say, you don't want to go to a place called hell void of God. All you have to do is see where things are godless, and that's a little hors d'oeuvre of what's going to be the main course of the meal. And so we have a responsibility to share the good news. And, and by the way, do you know what uh, you know what a gospel means? Good news. I've heard people go, we got to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I, I like those type of churches. Nothing wrong with that. But I always kind of got, I didn't understand why the pastor was angry about the gospel. It means good news, right? He said, hey, I want to share some good news. Not like, I want to share good news. I mean, that's not really good news. That's, that sounds like bad news, right? And then often there's a mis, <laughs> mistranslation of what's going on. But it's interesting that a lot of people have a hard time sharing their faith. I was reading LifeWay Research says that 61% of people who attend church twice a month have not shared their faith in the last year. In fact, 48% have never invited people to church. And then I just read this also it's from Barna. This just came out about a year ago. Almost half of practicing Christian millennials say evangelism is wrong. What? Yeah, because we don't want to impose our beliefs on somebody else. So, it, you know, it sounds wonderful. I mean, that's kind of, so this is the system we're in right now, but it's not what God called us to do. You see, God has called us. You're not on this planet just to make money, buy things, move to Florida or Arizona, and die. Okay, God has us here for a reason. And you know what? It's not about your personal happiness. Now, I know that may walk on, step on your toes because we, we, we have this, we, have, we, we serve a crazy God in America. It's called the God of happiness. Because basically our premise of our government, and what, I have a right to pursue my happiness. And that's all people want to do. And unfortunately, my happiness might, might be, be damaged to other people. So it's not about happiness. It's about holiness. And holiness is wholeness in God. And when you're whole, you'll be ultimately happy. So what's happened is people just feel like they want to choose and do. God has us here for a reason. And make no mistake, the things we see going on in our culture is because of men and women, teenagers and boys and girls are not sharing the good news with a culture that has a fatal disease. What are we to do about that? How are we supposed to share? Maybe you think for a moment that when you share the faith with somebody, you have to be a, a Times Square, uh, standing on top of a block of, of books or something, screaming at people, turn around, you know, with a Bible in your hand, and people go, oh, it's terrible. I used to think really bad things about people that did that until I heard a person that I greatly respect said, I was, I was, uh, I was strung out on drugs, and I was walking down in, in New York City, and this guy said, turn or, or burn, basically, and he gave his life to Christ. He needed that adrenaline shot to wake him up. So I have learned not to say it's the method I like. God will use what he wants to use. He'll even use a donkey. And he'll even use me. <laughs> I can say that about myself, okay? I've learned that. In the past, I would say about somebody else, but I've learned to make fun of myself. Therefore, I will be safe. Anyhow, but God will use all sorts of people to make a difference. And so what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to share our faith? And in the, in the time of Peter, Peter is talking to a church that's going through persecution, through a difficult time. And we're going to just go ahead and look at it today. How to share the gospel persuasively. How to share it. And you're like, I don't want to share it. Well, maybe you're like me. Maybe you had a, a period in your life where you used to share the gospel. You were excited about Jesus, and no matter what someone said, you talked to them. You go in a restaurant, hey, let me tell you about Jesus. And maybe you were insensitive for a period of time. And then after a while, you found out people were blowing you off. So then you got hurt, and you're like, now you're afraid to do it again. I mean, if you get bit by a dog, you don't want to pet a dog anymore, right? I'm not saying they're dogs, but you know what I'm saying, right? So this is what happens. You, you're afraid to do it. Or maybe even at this church, Cornerstone, a number of, number of years ago, over a decade or so, or more than that, a, a year ago, we learned an evangelism technique. And all of a sudden, we had 600 people give their lives to Christ, so we thought, on the streets of Waterbury and different places. We would give them the salvation script, and we would, we, you know, we were sincere, but it was all about the script, it was all about getting the person to say the prayer. And I'm like, people, you know, I'll say the prayer. Just leave me alone. And we found it wasn't very fruitful. And then it became almost like a, a, a scenario of like a sales call that I have to kind of knock on the door and, and kind of per convince you to follow Jesus. And that doesn't work. If people think you're a robot and you're not, you're just, you're talking at them, not to them. So what do we do? How are we supposed to share the good news? Because after all, I don't want to bother anyone else like the millennials. I'm, I'm not coming after the millennials. I'm just saying that about 20% of Generation X's believe that. That's what I am. But millennials now are at 45%. And this is what they're finding through surveys. Well, what are we called to do? 
Well, I want to just read what it says in 1 Peter 3.15. Pastor Rich talked last week about how we are to do the right thing despite difficulty. And he, he alluded to this a little bit, but I want to go a little deeper in the area of how to share your faith. And here's what Peter has to say. But in your hearts, honor Christ. In our hearts. It's always about the heart, everybody. I want to honor Christ, the Lord, as holy. Always being prepared. Prepared like a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout. I think they're all the same now, right? I, I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that's in you. Let's continue to read. Yet do it with arrogance and vitriol. Oh, it doesn't say that. Yet do it with what? What? And what? Okay. What did Aretha Franklin say, right? Having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, and by the way, my friends, you will be slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. Hopefully, our behavior and what we do will point people to Jesus Christ. And even if not, that one day of judgment, they're going to say, you know what? Thank you. You actually did show me the way. You don't know what God is going to do. For it is better to suffer for doing good if that should be God's will, then for doing evil. And so I'm going to break that down today, okay? So I'm going to go ahead to 1 Peter 2, 11. It says the following. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners. In other words, you are passing through. This is not your place. You are on a trip. Many of you are driving, maybe going on trips, right, going to a vacation spot, and you may stay in a hotel overnight. You may stay at a rest stop. That's not your home. You're only sojourning through. You, you don't, like, move all your stuff to the hotel and say, I'm moving in here. No, you're passing through. We are passing through this earth. I urge your sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh. We've been talking about this. We've been unpacking this, this particular verse for the last five or weeks, five or six weeks. That we are to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. You see, one, I want to remind us again, your biggest problem is not the devil. Your biggest problem is not your ex-wife or ex-husband or your parents or your pastor or the government. Your biggest problem is you. And until you understand that you are at war with the sin nature in you, until we understand that we have to battle the stuff inside of us, right, that, and that's what we need to do. And then we also need to keep our conduct among the Gentiles honorable, non-believers honorable. So you are at war with the sin inside of you. And... It's never right to do the wrong thing to somebody else. So keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. This particular verse comes all the way back to 315 again. It talks about the same thing. So I want to reiterate that again. We've been talking about how to deal with the government, how to deal, how did Jesus deal with persecution, how to deal with a spouse, how to deal with slavery and your boss and things of that nature. We can go back to the series. But today's how to share your faith, okay? So here's the, here's the first one. To help others find Christ, we must focus not only on the content of the gospel, but on how we present the gospel. How we present the gospel is extremely important important. If you're married or you have, you know, you can be, you can win an argument but lose a marriage. You can be dead right. It's not only the content, it's also how you deliver the content. It's the attitude in which you do it. It's so important to understand that. So to help others find Christ, we must focus not only on the content of the gospel, but also how we present it. And, uh, but in your hearts, here we go, honor Christ, back to First Peter, as the Lord always be prepared to make his defense to anyone who asks you for the reason of the hope that's in you, but do it with gentleness and respect. We're going to start with gentleness and respect first. Because if you don't do it with gentleness and respect, why does anyone want to listen to you in the first place? Right? No, of course not. No one wants to hear you. So here are the three things we're going to talk about today. Here we go. Be humble and respectful. First point, calm down. All right, calm down. You know, God can defend himself. I don't need to defend God. God's word, Jesus says the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. I don't have to fight the gates of hell. 
I don't have to fight the enemy. God's, that's God's job. I don't, I don't have to worry. The truth will take care of itself. Truth can handle any inquiry. I don't have to defend God. God defends me. Right? I, I don't have to make up stories for God. It's the truth. I believe it is the truth. I believe the truth can handle any inquiry, a real inquiry. So be humble, respectful. Speak up. Share your faith. you got to share it and live it out. But you know what? If you're, if you're speaking up without being humble, who wants to hear you? I don't. There's been, I'm not going to mention the person's name, but there was somebody that would go on TV a lot that supposedly uh, represented the evangelicals or Christians or Bible-believing Christians, and the guy was so offensive that I wanted to rebel against him. <laughs> I, I, he so irritated me the way he spoke, so smug and all oh, those people, and, and he started, like, tearing, tearing politicians down, making fun of the president. Meanwhile, I'm an evangelical. I mean, really? I mean, I was so turned off to this guy that I want to rebel. So I had to repent for rebelling. So there's no way of getting out of it. But let's talk about that for a few minutes. Be humble and respectful. Calm down. Remember, God is God. You're not. He can take care of himself. He just he really, he really, really can. You see, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So if you look at people as a prospect, I got to share the gospel. And you don't have to speak in King James English. You don't have to walk around. Have you been washed in the blood of Jesus? What the heck are you talking about? Come to the altar. What? I, I, well, uh, do I need to get an altar? Alteration? They don't know what you're talking about, right? They, they have no idea. I have a burden for you. Who speaks that way? I have a burden for you? Who sp- I mean, really, think about that for a moment. The things we say, you know, uh, let's just bring it before the Lord. What? So, you know, people, so they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Be normal. Don't be weird. <laughs> if you're weird, then be weird. But don't be weird. Don't be all super spirit. Don't be a Jedi Knight. Okay, just talk to people. Like, they're, like people don't want to hear your sales pitch. Connect before you correct. This is something I learned from Josh McDowell many years ago. He said this. He says, rules without relationship equal rebellion. And I try to keep that in mind when raising kids. And now they quote it back to me. Anyhow, rules without relationship equals rebellion. People don't want to know what you know until they know you care. And so when you go to somebody, just don't throw the gospel at them. Get to know them as a person. You know what Jesus did, by the way? Jesus went to this horrible, t- now, horrible town among the Jewish people. It was a God-forsaken city. You would never even look that direction towards Samaria. You would walk around it. What Jesus did, he went broad daylight in John chapter 4. Broad daylight, uh, John chapter 4 is the chapter. It's not the name of the town. See, that's, see, I assume that everyone knows what I'm talking about. See, that's the problem with us. The problem with me. So he goes down to the well midday. Midday is the time where uh, the people that, Ill, you know, ill repute people, people like prostitutes would come out. The, the good people would stay home out of the sun in the middle of a hot day in the Middle East. So he goes to the, the town well, the watering hole, if you will, and there's a woman there, a Samaritan, which is not even supposed to look at a Jew or talk to a Jewish person. A Jew is never supposed to touch or talk to a Samaritan, especially a woman, a woman of the evening, even though she's in the middle of the day. So he's at the well, and Jesus does something extraordinary and scandalous. You know what he says to the woman? You're a sinner. Turn. Can I get a witness? No, that's not what he did. Okay, uh, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. If that's, if that's what you like, I can do that all day long <laughs> because it's fun. <laughs> and it makes a lot of money. No, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that, but I did. All right. So anyhow, uh, so Jesus goes to the town. He's talking to the woman. He says to the woman, he says, can I have something to drink? Which was amazing. He basically said, I value you. He didn't talk about God, didn't talk about himself. He asked the woman, can I have a drink? She's like, you? She had no idea who it was. She knew he he was Jewish because you could tell the way he dressed and all that. You a Jew talking to me? Wow. And, he could, and she could tell he was not trying to get something out of her. 
And, and what happened next? Well, the, the dialogue goes on. Jesus begins to talk to her. He shows her self-respect. He connected before he corrected her. He showed he cared about her. What would happen if we showed people we so quote-unquote hate that we love them? So this is the problem I'm finding, and I'm, I'm going to say it again. A lot of people like to watch television from 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock on certain news channels. And all they do, on, whoever you watch, all they do is tear each other apart, make make fun of people, say how horrible people, I'm talking about the news channels, right? I mean, this person is a complete, I mean, if you go to one side or the other side, and if you're living at that address, it's always knocking someone down, he's an idiot, this person did this, you always, and that's what happens, you start training yourself, and we spend more time watching 7 to 9, or listening to podcasts, than we do reading the Bible, and then we start acting the same way. Start hating people who don't know Jesus. They're supposed to act terrible. That's their job description. Hello? Now, if you're a believer, and you say you're a believer, and you're acting, well, that's a different story. But the world's supposed to act lost. That's why they're lost. I wouldn't have a job if that was the case. So I'm grateful. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying, right? So connect before you correct. And that's what Jesus did. Approach, approach wins over content. How you present is even more important than what you present. So show people respect, even if you disagree with them. There's been situations where I've met people that, you know, when you read about them in the paper and all that, you can get all upset. But when you meet someone at a hotel and they're checking you in, and I don't know if it's a man or a woman, I don't know who it is, and I can get upset and angry, but you know what, I start, I start talking to them. And I ended up praying for the person behind the desk. I don't even know. I say, well, you mind if I prayed for you? I just, I can see you're, you're back trouble. I began to pray for the person. I, I didn't, you know, I began to say, God, give me the eyes to see this person. Not get angry. That's what, I mean, they don't know better. Right? So we're supposed to love people. Well, pastor, are you one of those churches? No, I'm not one. I'm a church that believes in the Bible. We got to tell them the truth. It'd be hateful for me not to tell them the truth that you have a fatal disease. But imagine going to the doctor, and the doctor goes, what's the matter? You have cancer! I mean, would you want to go to that doctor? I just woke you up. Some of you were sleeping. That's why I did that. But if the doctor comes to you and says, listen, I'm really concerned. You have cancer. It happened to me five years ago. I had melanoma, and I had to get checked out. The doctor was very kind to call me on my vacation and ruin it. <laughs> but I, he talked to me what I had to do, and I did it. And I'm good, all right? But he did it respectfully and nice. He didn't talk down to me. How dare you go in the sun? He didn't do that. He was really nice to me, right? He spoke, why don't we treat people that way that don't know better, right? So approach wins over content. So treat people nice. That's really part of it, everybody. So yet do it with gentleness. That means meekness. Meekness simply means, if listen, if you don't know what a wretched sinner you are without God, then that's a problem. When you realize how much God has saved you and you know what a wretch you are without him, of course, what's a wretch? We never talk about that. What's that? Oh, he's a real wretch. A messed up person, right? You do it with gentleness and what? Respect. Do you know in the book of Jude, it, Jude, it talks about these people that are slandering celestial beings. They don't know what they're doing. He says, Michael, even the archangel, in disputing over Moses' body, did not bring accusations against Satan. He says, be gone in, he says, be gone in the name of Jesus, in the name of God, be gone. But he didn't speak about him. I, I get, when I see Christians talk, I'm going to kick Satan in the teeth. I'm going to cry. I mean, really? That's just dumb. Do you follow me? The Bible it showed respect. Respect is so important. So we got to do gentleness and respect. You know what? Every person is made in the image of God. So we should show respect. All right? So be humble and respectful. What does that say? Calm down. I'm talking to myself when I correct the children. Okay, calm down. Okay, here's another one. Speak up. Share your faith. You should share your faith. Why? Why should I do that? Always be prepared. We're going to talk about how to be prepared, okay? We're going to talk about that in a few moments. To make a defense. And defense simply does not mean that you're fighting. It just means you're giving a reason for the hope that's within you. That you can share why. I mean, a lot of you are really happy about sharing about restaurants that you like, right? So why not share about God? So 
here's some things I want to show you how to, how to share your faith, all right? Just bear with me here. I know this is a basic opportunity, but many of us are not doing it. And I want to encourage us to begin to share our faith. Because if you're a boxer and you never get in the boxing ring and box, guess what happens to you? You lose your passion for boxing, right? But you get more passionate about boxing, as you can tell I'm a boxer. <laughs> you get more passion for boxing when you box. Because now I know why I'm training. I, I, I want to fight. I want to be a good fighter. But if you're not boxing and you're a boxer, you're going to lose your passion. When we share our faith, we begin to get more ignited for our purpose. So you don't have to defend Christianity, but you have to explain your hope in Christ. Here's a three-point sermon you can share. Here, Ready for it? How I came to Christ, where I am now, and how you can join in. It's so simple. Anyone can do that. How I came to Christ, where I am now, and how you can pray too. You don't have to know all the answers. You don't have to know by transubstantiation. You don't have to know propitiation. You don't have to know all that stuff. Next week we'll talk about those two things. All right? You don't have to say everything, but say something. Say something. Not just anything, but say something. All right? Now, but in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always be prepared to make a defense. Always be prepared. Well, how do we do that? Here we go. We talked about sharing your story. Share your story. Who can defend that? Who can come against your story? This is what happened to me. People love stories. Tell them your story. Tell them how. I'll tell Listen, when I was 23 years old, I gave up on my faith. I didn't think God existed anymore. I thought it was, I didn't know who God was. I was an agnostic. I thought God had wind up the clock and left me by myself. I had no idea who the real God was. I didn't even know Jesus existed. And I, I struggled for about 12 months with this. And I, was, I hated life. And I could share my story, how I came to Christ. Who doesn't want to hear something like that? You know, you're being honest, okay? Also this, you don't have to know the answer now, but you should find the answers. Well, I don't know about that, but let me, let me find out. I really don't know. Just be honest. You know, I don't know everything. Remember, God can take care of himself. It's true. If it's true, you don't have anything to worry about. It is true. So say, you know, let me get back to you, and we, we can help you with that. Let me tell you something. Be a little careful with Google, though. If, if, you, have, if you have a lump on your arm, don't go to Google. <laughs> How many have ever done that before? You went to Google instead of going to your doctor, and you scared yourself silly. Okay, some of the stuff on the Internet is way off. Be careful. That goes in good sight. But we'll help you here. I mean, seriously, we'll try to, I don't know all the answers, but if I don't know the answers, I'll try to find the answers. And sometimes there are things we just don't know, and it's okay. I'm not God. God can take care of himself. But go ahead and find the answer. And so in verse 9, 13 through 25 of John, there's a great story I want to share with you. For the sake of time, I'm going to go, go quickly through it. There was a man that Jesus healed by the pool and put mud on his eyes. Because he put mud on his eyes, it was a Sabbath. It was considered work. So the, the Pharisees were upset at, the, at Jesus, and they were upset at the man. So here they go. They brought, to, they brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. And when you're blind, you don't have an education. You can't read. You have no, no knowledge about anything, probably, right? So what happened? Now, it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. But, so the Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight. And he said to them, he put mud on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him since he has opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and he had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight. And they asked him, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But how he now sees, we don't know. Nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. Like a good, and once the kids, kids get older, you can just throw it at someone else. He, he can't pay his bill. She can't, I don't know. You talk to your, I'm not going to co-sign. All right, here we go. Ask him. He's of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they fear the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he is to be put out of the synagogue, be ostracized 
excommunicated, if you will. Now, what's, what's, Therefore, his parents said, he's of age, ask him. So the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. Look at his answer here. He answered, whether he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, I now see. There's the testimony. This is what I was. This is what I am now. And he also said, do you want to come follow him too? <laughs> it was hilarious. It's a great story. That's a lot of fun. Okay, let's move forward. All right, I, I enjoy the Bible. Is that okay? Okay, after all, I do this. Okay. You should enjoy it too. Okay, and finally, learn how to share the basics of the gospel. I want to give you a crash course on how to share your gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, how do you do it? Well, I like what George Whitfield said, a great revivalist during the first great awakening in America. The greatest way we can show the love, so love to another person, is by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. That's not hate, it's love. It's love. Well, how do we share? Well, this is something I learned a number of years ago, Bill Bright, and I like Bill Bright. He's very bright, um, wonderful man of God. And he actually shared this, and I like it. It's called the Roman Road, a little modified to, to the Bucci standards, okay? But anyhow, salvation through Christ. How does it work? What I often would do, I'll get a napkin out, I'll draw something, and I'll put two things like that. I'll say, this is, what's that? Well, well, hang on. This is man, this is God. But there's a gulf between us, okay? And then I'll say this. I said, Romans 3.23, if you want to take screenshots, you're welcome to. You can, I'll just, you don't have to, I don't have to get any royalties from this. Okay? For all have sinned and fall, fall short of the glory of God. You mentioned that. You memorized that. It's not hard to memorize. For all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's man, there's sin, there's God. There's a big problem here, all right? For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. All right? So how does that work? Here we go. Ephesians 2.8. For by grace, something you didn't earn, you have been saved through what? Through believing in faith. And this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works that no man may boast. This is the beauty of the gospel. Every other world religion, you have to do something. Christianity, you have to receive it. So, man tries, but there's a sin problem. Well, what's the answer? But God showed his agape love towards us that while we were yet sinners, you weren't even looking for God, but God came looking for you. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And you put the cross. And so he's the way to God. Jesus is the way to God. And Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. What about people born in the middle of Africa in the jungle? What about them? They're going to have to go through Jesus Christ. And he'll make the determination. But there's only one salvation and one name. is through Jesus Christ. You don't have to go crazy. You don't have to find all, it's just, it's just what the Bible says. Okay, and if you want to know more, you can um, ask my wife. Romans 10, 9, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Okay, what you got to confess with your mouth is that Jesus is Lord. Do you know what Lord means? Back in that day, if someone was your Lord, that means they owned you. You had no rights. Pretty much, you're like a slave. The Lord is over everything I have. Nothing I have is my own. If you confess that Jesus is your Lord, not that you just believe in him. Who cares if you believe in him? That doesn't matter. But have you surrendered your life to Christ? The Bible says in the book of James, even the devil believes and fears. It's not enough just to believe. Have you made Jesus your Lord? If he's not your Lord, you're not saved. You're not a Christian. You only like the Christian philosophy. I'm telling you the truth here, okay? Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that simple. So you share that. It's not that complicated. The gospel is extraordinarily simple. When we go on mission trips, we're blown away. We just share. We, it's like see, spot, run, and they give their lives to Christ. That's how simple it is. Jesus died on the cross, and he loves you. And people give their lives to Christ because they know it's the truth. It's not complicated. Okay. Therefore, since we've been justified by faith, right, and have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. So there's a, a little, you can go back later on on, um, on demand and take screenshots and take notes. And that's, that's one of the ways you can do it. Okay, so hope you understand. Be humble, respectful. You, no one's going to listen to you if you're a jerk. Okay, they're not. Speak up, share your faith, share what you know. 
And then most, one of the most important is live it out. Live it out. My life is not my own. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience so that when, they, when you are slandered. And by the way, my friends, you are going to be slandered. I don't care how nice you are, how pleasant you are, they're going to slander us. Get used to it. And don't get all ticked off about it. That's their job description. They're supposed to be mean. The church is not supposed to be mean. That's when I get ticked off. <laughs> I do. I, 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 but people that outside the faith, what do you expect? Right? So, uh, do it gentleness, respect, having good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile you by your good behavior in Christ will be put to shame. Like, I don't know, but this person is doing the right thing. This person is doing the right thing. This is what happened, by the way. The first martyr of the church is, is Stephen. I just read about him. I'm reading through the Bible in the year. By the way, I highly encourage you to do that. And here's, here's, here is um, Stephen sharing the gospel, and he says, God, don't hold it against them. And he shares the gospel message with him, and they end up killing him. And there they throw his clothes at a young man by the name of Saul. Saul, Saul, that man's love that was supernatural, and it rocked him, and it, it haunted him. And if it wasn't for Stephen, I don't think Paul would have become, Saul would have become the apostle Paul. So, very interesting how that works. For it's better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than doing evil. Okay? I'm being persecuted for my faith. I heard it all the time. What's going on? I'm trying to share at work, and they're, they're getting upset with me. Yeah. But are you hired to share your faith at work, or are you hired, hired to do your work? Yeah, but we're supposed to obey God rather than man. No, you're hired. Do your work. If you want to talk to your coworker, talk to them afterwards. But don't take the company. That's stealing from the company. That's sin. <gasps> How can you say that? I just said it. Do you follow me, everybody? Thank you. Our faith becomes stronger as we express it. A growing faith is a sharing faith. If you're not satisfied in your life, you find life boring, could it be that you are not in the ring like you should be? You're a boxer. You're an athlete for Christ. And if you're sitting in your room reading about running and not running, why not get out there and do it? Jesus says this, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you to the end of the age. There is the going comes the power. But if you're not going, nothing's going to happen. I'm telling, I'm encouraging myself and you to get out there and begin to share your faith. And 1 Peter says again, but in your hearts, honor Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to make a defense. Be prepared to make a defense. Anyone who asks you for a reason, let's just move on. I wanted to share with this. For here, Romans 10, 13. This is very important. God has purposely, God does not do certain things because he wants us to do the work. He wants us to work in partnership. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everybody. But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? And, and how can they believe in him if they've, they have not heard about him? And, and how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? I've told this story before, but it, it's worth mentioning again. We support a missionary in Indonesia named Don Butera. And Don Butera came to our, came, I was having dinner with him, my wife. He says, I am so upset. I'm like, what's going on, Don? Can you believe it? No, what? What's going on? He says, Jesus is showing up in mosques and visions and telling people about himself. I said, that's amazing. He says, no, that's our job. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? It's almost like when mom has to make your bed, right? God has given us that job. And, and so... And how can they believe in him if they have not heard about him? And, and how can they hear about him unless they, someone tells them? And, and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? This is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. We're called to bring the good news. Is there a lot of bad news out there? Absolutely. You know, politics is fine. Running for the school board is fine. Making a difference in the community is fine. But that's not going to save our culture or save our world. 
there's only one thing that will save the world, not a political party. It's Jesus Christ in him alone. It's Jesus Christ in him alone. The only hope I have is Jesus. The only hope you have is Jesus. The only hope for this church is Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's simple. It's not complicated. But it's powerful, profound, and beautiful. We need to share our faith. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage myself to do more. Can I confess something to you? I struggle with this. I get in my own little world sometimes. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go to the gym. I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm going to go to the, I'm going to, whatever, I'm going to go hiking, and I don't want to talk to anyone. Leave me alone. I put my blinders up, and, and if the Holy Spirit says talk to someone, I'm sorry, God, I'm, I'm in my own little world right now. I don't have that luxury. You don't know who God's going to send your way. And so we got to be saying, yes, Lord. Whatever you say, God. Open my eyes, God. I want to be ready in season, God, to share the hope. And you know what's going to happen, everybody? When you start sharing your faith, you're going to find out it's exciting. Wow, I'm made for this. Of course, life is boring when you're not doing God's word. If you're not living in God, you're going to be just chewing gum in life. Do you want to get to heaven one day? What would you do? Well, I went to church and listened to podcasts and listened to Caleb and had a chicken sandwich. But I, you ever share your faith? No, I, that's, that's not my job. Or would you rather, how about someone goes, you're a Christian? I didn't know you were a Christian. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me you're a Christian? I didn't know. I'm, I'm suffering here, and you didn't tell me. My friends, we have the cure for the biggest problem humanity has. It's not the coronavirus. It's the sin virus, which will kill you and kill me. And it's hateful not to share the antidote. It's the greatest form of hate I can think about. It's not to tell people about Jesus Christ. That's the most hateful thing that I can do. And we do it. God's called us. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I don't stand here having it all together. I don't either, God. Father, I confess for myself, I, I get too much in, in my own little world. Let me close down and just be in my own little world and be happy and entertain myself. And let me just, I don't want to be bothered with people right now. But, Father, you don't give us that luxury. In fact, it's not a luxury. It's misery. Not to do your will leads us to a dull, boring, and depressing life. But, Father, you have everyone that hears my voice that has given their life to you that you've called us to go out and to share the good news. And while we share, you will pour out your signs and wonders. You will do miracles among us. But when we do your work, and Father, we don't want to work for you. We want to work with you. And we thank you that while we go, you said, Jesus, I am with you until the end of the age when we do these things. So Lord, awaken our hearts and give us passion for the things you're passionate about. In Jesus' name. There's two other things I want to say, and I've gone a little long. It's this. I understand I've grown up in the church at times, and I've heard people give sermons like this. you got to share your faith. I'm like, I had no desire to share my faith. Truth be told, I, don't want to, I have no desire to do that. I could, barely, I could barely function in my faith, let alone share my faith. So why would I share about it? You know, if you're in that place, it's okay. But let me just share something with you, very, very important. You're designed by God for God. And God has a design and a purpose upon your life. When you begin to function in your design, your design will function in you. And you'll start having more joy than you ever believe possible. There are people that will go on mission trips to a different country and share the gospel and spend thousands of dollars, but they will not go to their next door neighbor and talk to them. Let me just encourage you. This is not a condemnation. This is an opportunity. When you start doing what you're called to do, your calling will come in you and you'll start enjoying it. Why? Because you're made by God for God and to work in concert with God. God has you here for a reason. You're not just a consumer index. Let me ask you a question today. Have you given your life to Jesus? I ask it every single week because it's the most important decision that we, we make. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and bow your head just in reverence for those around us right now. This is the holy moment. I'm going to ask no one just to leave for a few moments. 
Let me ask you a question right now. If you were, I know it's, if you were to die right now, are you absolutely positive you'd be in heaven? And if you're thinking, well, compared to everybody else, I'm pretty good. No, that doesn't count. There's only one way in which we will be saved is through Jesus Christ and him alone. If you've never given your life to Christ, I want to encourage you right now. Don't wait. Today is the day of salvation. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And if you'd like to pray with me in your heart, that's what it's all about. If you want to repeat with me in your heart, Lord Jesus, that's right, go ahead. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you rose again from the dead. I ask you right now to forgive me of everything I've ever done wrong. Maybe mention a couple of things. Both things known, God, and, and things I don't know. And today, I declare I'm not my own anymore. I step down. I'm not in charge of my life. God, I give my life to you the best way I know how. Take my life. It is yours. God, come and fill me with your spirit now in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that, we believe you began a relationship with Jesus. Jesus does not say, say the sinner's prayer and you're good to go. He says, come follow me. Cornerstone is simply a community of people that are following God. I don't have the answers. God has the answers. And I, we want to encourage each other to get connected. In the front pocket of your seat, there's connection cards. You want to pull that out. I made a decision today. Also on your screen, there should be a, uh, to follow Jesus, there should be a, a, a phone number as well. To follow Jesus. You can leave that there. That Thank you so much. Text believe. Get your phone out and your smartphone out and, and put two, put 860-499-4888. That's 860-499-4888 and text believe. We'll give you the next steps or the front card in front of you. Okay, everybody? I really want to encourage you. And after our service today, we'll have people up front. Go to the front desk. We'll give you a Bible. We want to help you with the next steps. I don't have all the answers, but I know who has all the answers. And we're an imperfect church. I mean, I'm an imperfect guy, but I serve a perfect God. And there's, and you know what? Coming out of this whole 15 months, God's calling us to go a whole lot deeper. We're going to need to, to survive the coming days. So let's get ready. Amen? Hey, listen, I also want to encourage you uh, a ways to give. You don't have to give, you get to give. The Bible says, my God shall supply all of my needs. The context of that is being generous. I'm going to tell you two quick ways to be prosperous in life. Spend less than you make and tithe and be generous and watch what God will do. I've been old and now I'm middle-aged. I've never, I've never begged for bread. I don't get all my greeds, but you know what? God has met all my needs. Four ways. Text Cornerstone Cheshire to 833, all these numbers, my goodness. 833-245-5608. You can use the PushPay app. You can go to cornerstonetreasure.com. You can mail it. And if you're in person, which most of you are right now, you can put it in the boxes as we leave here today. Okay, everybody? Hey, I just want to encourage you with something. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he shine his face upon you and give you peace. Go in the power and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Share the hope that's within you and watch your life be transformed to follow the adventure of God in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you. Amen.